We all know that riding requires us to have good balance. This enables us to be safe in the saddle and also to be effective. But I do find that people come to me saying that balance is a particular area that they feel they need to work on because they just don't feel that they are able to move with the horse as well as they should do. But how does balance even work? It's quite a complicated system, so I'm just going to quickly run through the different parts of the mechanism that make sure it works smoothly. We have three parts to our balance mechanisms that involve sensory components. That is, first of all, our vision, our eyes. Second of all, our proprioception. That is, very generally speaking, our body's awareness of where it is in space. We have special nerves that do this in places like our joints and our tendons. And finally, we have our vestibular system. That's mostly, speaking, the inner ear workings. All of the input that comes from these sensory areas gets processed by our brains and then comes out into muscle activity or motor output to make sure that our body is then able to respond effectively to the sensory input that it has already been receiving. All of these different components need to be working together correctly for us to have good balance. So we need to have good sensory input, with our brain to be working effectively and efficiently, and then we need to have good motor or muscle output. So why can it be reduced or compromised in the first place? There's loads and loads of different reasons why this can be, and lots of them can unfortunately affect us as riders. So injury is a really classic one. Operations are also really, unfortunately, common one amongst riders as well. Illness, that can really affect our balance, particularly even a really simple thing like a cold which blocks our sinuses, that can affect the workings of our inner ear and that really knocks our balance mechanisms right out the window. Um, also things like stiffness, particularly in our joints, our necks are really important. Actually, they're linked in very much to the vestibular system, so stiffness in our neck or stiffness anywhere will really impact on those proprioceptive signals that are going up through into the brain to help our body know where we are in space. Obviously, reduced vision, that's a major impact because we're not getting the signals going through to our brain properly from our eyes. And a real big one that's very unfortunate, but we can't avoid it, and that is as we get older, our balance tends to uh, reduce as well. A lot of this is down to uh, weakness that comes with age, unfortunately. Um, we can't avoid it, but we can really, really keep working to make sure that we are strong and therefore that we don't have the negative impact that comes with weakness on our balance. So it can be really quite overwhelming knowing what to do to even begin to work on your balance if you think that it is not particularly good at the moment. And it's also quite hard to know sometimes how to fit it into the day. You're busy, but you know you need to work on it. How are you going to make it quick and simple and easy? I'm going to show you six really simple ways that you can work on your balance every single day if you want to and if you need to. No equipment is needed, but you might want to have a wall if your balance is really dodgy at the moment. Okay, so I'd like you to stand first of all, both feet on the floor, make sure that you're really happy with your surroundings, and then just see if you can close your eyes. So with doing this, all we are doing is taking away that visual component of your balance mechanisms, making sure that the vestibular system is working, make sure that proprioceptive system is working, the brain can respond, and send out the right muscle activation down through your legs, up through the trunk. Make sure you can keep your balance here. If that's easy, with your eyes open, go onto one leg. So immediately we've taken away one whole side of our body here. We're relying totally on those muscles. On this side of our body, we're relying totally on the joints, the tendons to be giving their feedback into our balance system. Once you've mastered this one, then you can have a go at closing your eye on that one leg. And then you're going to try and keep relaxed through your body as your brain really listens in to all those signals coming through that one leg. So coming up, the sensation through the skin on your foot, the sensation that's coming from those joint receptors, and those tendon receptors where you're telling your brain where you are in space. So that is version number two. Then we're going to move on to being on one leg and seeing if you can turn your head. So this is quite a challenge because we're adding in not only changes in your visual input but also then we're using your neck and think about the fact that your neck is really important with its links not only to your proprioceptor, so your positional awareness, 
but also its links to that vestibular system. So we're starting to really up the ante a little bit here by turning your head. Okay, then I'm going to swap back on the other leg, onto one leg, and then see if you can start to move your arms. So you can keep the movements really simple to begin with. We can think about doing something like a give and retake of the reins. So remember, actually, when you're doing your give and retake of the reins in the saddle, the judge is looking to see that you can give the contact away and then you're not having to lean on the horse's mouth in order to hold yourself up. So being able to move your arms and keep your balance, that's a really, really good one. Okay, then if you're finding that easy, see if you can start to move your weight around. So I'm going to start back on the other leg and then see if you can do something nice and simple, like a little squat. So think about when you're in the saddle, you want to be able to do a nice rising trot and keep your balance equally. Make sure you're not loading one side more than the other when you're doing your rising trot. Obviously the mechanism is a little bit different when you're in the saddle. This is still a really good starting point. Okay, so of course with these you want to be working both sides of your body really, really equally. But this is a great place to start. Ideally you would be doing this on a nice flat level surface in bare feet if you can. Riding is not a static sport, we are on the move all the time, so I'm really keen to experiment with lots of different surfaces as you progress with your balance. I don't mind working on a slightly uneven lawn because I think it's adds a little extra dynamic challenge. If you find that when you go onto one leg you really, really struggle, there are two ways to make it a little bit easier until you get a bit more confident. One is just resting the big toe of the other leg onto the floor. You probably saw that I did that a couple of times just when I was doing the eyes closed version. You're then not using that leg fully to give you your balance, but you're just getting a little bit of extra halfway support. You can also, if you're near a wall, just have a finger or two against the wall and that can again give you a little bit of tiny extra positional awareness without really helping you to hold your balance. Hopefully you found these really useful and giving you some good ideas for how you can start every single day. You don't need to do very many of these or for very long. Start off with counting how many seconds you can do easily and then gradually build up from there always try to be relaxed. If you find that these are getting a little bit easy then check out the video here and that will help you go through some much more uh, challenging progressions that are a little bit more specific for your riding.